on my mind. Hello and welcome to episode 37 of The Boxing Show with me, your host, Rob Temmer. As always, I'd like to remind everybody to please like, comment and subscribe. Turn your notifications on for more boxing content. Now that's out of the way, I am joined by the one and only Mr. Barry Jones and Mr. Andy Clark as we look back at this past weekend and look forward to a couple of big shows this weekend, both in the UK and abroad. How are we doing, guys? Yeah, good. Good, yeah. Good, good weekend. Good weekend. Yeah. Busy. Yeah. Busy. Oh, yeah. Barry, you were, you were, did you work Friday as well? I did. Yeah. How did you get on? Yeah, it was all right. It's good. Works work, isn't it? Yeah. Do you want to elaborate <laughs> you know, to, to the many really? boxing fans it's who have been was, watching those shows, Barry? Me, is it? How did I get on? Well, I caught a train first. Okay, I had to catch a train and then I caught another train. Then I got a cab then from the hotel. I got a hotel in Manchester Airport. I was flying to Belfast the next day. So rather get a hotel in Bolton, I thought, hang on, I got a hotel in Manchester Airport. And then it's only like a 30 minute drive, maybe 25 with no traffic. Logistics. Can we stop now? Yeah, got, How yeah, was yeah. the shows, Barry? Yeah, the show they were all right. The, the, the Channel Five you know, it was okay. The undercard was really good on Channel Five. Um, some good kids, you know, yeah. you know, like um, making a statement. Some kids struggled as well. Cody Smith, one of them, he's been pretty good up to this point, but he got dropped and just got over the line. And then, um, and then Belfast was a you know, Belfast is Belfast, and it's a fantastic boxing city. And then it was a really good night. I haven't been to Belfast. I, don't think, I think the last show I did in Belfast was Fury Pianetta. Which was twenty eighteen. That's mad, see, because I thought you started boxing in twenty twenty. Oh no, yeah, we all saw you tweet. <laughs> Funny guy. Anyway, Andy, how are you? You had a <laughs> yeah, quieter weekend, didn't you? Yeah, like, I, I did. I did. Um, I watched the show on Saturday. Um, thoroughly enjoyed it. Other than that, you know, just uh, I actually got five hours of uninterrupted sleep last night. I'm not going to bore people with having a baby because loads of people got babies. It doesn't make me special. Um, but uh, that's left me feeling like I've been on some kind of extended spa break. <laughs> so I'm full of it today. <laughs> Absolutely full of it. Well, I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm the glad opposite. Someone is. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> okay, uh, we're going to start on Friday. A quick uh, skim, I guess, through Friday's action because, of course, we do have Saturday as well as two shows this weekend to look through. Uh, we're going to start off Barry on that Wasserman card. Uh, we saw the return of Nathan Gorman, um, and not. A vintage Nathan Gorman, um, who lost to Bodan Murinets over eight rounds in a, I think it's fair to say, a pretty disappointing performance from Nathan Gorman. Yeah, he was awful, wasn't he? Let's be honest, he didn't know he twenty one stone. For a guy, they're all bit everyone's big to me, but for, he's well, he's six foot three, so twenty one stones a lot of weight for that height, for any height, arguably. But and you could see it, so I thought, oh, maybe he's trained with that weight on him, so he's used to it. Because people are going about Gorman's power, that certainly we were in the broadcast. And I thought, well, he was always known for his boxing, I thought, yeah. more than anything else. And um, they can all punch. And he's, but I thought he's boxing, but he needs to be, because he's never a guy who has great shape, but he's always quite mobile on his feet, I thought. And um, But he wasn't. He couldn't get in, couldn't get in distance. And he had and then Mar uh, Marinette, who was pretty much a blown-up cruiserweight, but fast and long arms, and he just and he used it really well. But then he started to back home. He didn't back home. up. Gorman volunteered the space. And I couldn't understand what was going on, and he clearly lost, you know, and, and he deserved to lose. And I think it was, I think it was a fight he could have and should have won, to be honest. I always felt it was a little bit of a tricky fight for him because you know, he'd been out for a while, and and, and Marinette, you know, just be cash alley, but he's quite awkward. I watched a bit of him, and he could be quite erratic in his performances. But he's uh, a little bit of an awkward guy to find out. But he thought if you can hit him hard, you stop that movement, then he, he haven't really got much else. But Gorman couldn't land a punch on him barely. Because he just couldn't get close, because he couldn't move his feet, because he was too heavy. I think that's the reason why. So yeah, he's like literally that. That was a good opportunity opportunity for him in the heavyweight division. You're only one fight away from a big fight, and you big money fights. I said this about Derek Chisora back in 2015. You can recycle a heavyweight till his legs fall off, and, and he has, hasn't he proved that? Yeah. You know, and so in, so you always won't fight from a big money fight, and that was an opportunity for there on, on terrestrial TV to put up a decent performance, get a stoppage, or it don't matter, just win. And he couldn't do it. So I don't know where his career goes now. 
and you, you'll have a good look at himself because you can't go in the ring out of shape like that and expect to box well and the, uh, that's where I was going to come to next really where does this leave Nathan Gorman you kind of look at the, the heavyweight division nowadays we go back four years ago obviously had that fight with Daniel Dubois both unbeaten you know you look at the kind of domestic scene you've got Wardley Fraser Clark Adelaide Sol Dakers would have been an opportunity for him to kind of I guess as Barry said you know get a win get back in that mix and you're only one fight away but it feels like he's a long long way away now this is only his second fight in the in the last year 18 months or so and coming up short in the way that he did let alone losing but coming up out of shape and losing with a bit of a whimper it's pretty difficult to see where Nathan Gorman goes from here the first thing he has to do now is is just sit down and have a good discussion with himself about what it is that he wants to do does he really want to box professionally anymore or not uh, and if he does what does he feel that he can achieve and how is he going to go about doing it because the kind of curse of the heavyweight division in, in a sense is that there is no weight limit so you can just neglect your training and still turn up on the night and feel like you can still put in a performance and get the job done whereas obviously when you have to make a weight you can still neglect training and then crash weight late and do it all wrong, but it's it's just a different kind of scenario. So that that's the first thing he has to decide is, do I really want to do this anymore? Do, do I have ambition? Do I enough, have enough ambition to motivate me to do what needs to be done to get into shape and be able to give the best account of myself? Um, and if the answer is lukewarm, it has to be an, an emphatic yes for it to be worthwhile him continuing because this isn't a sport where you can be half in and half out you have to be all the way in and if you're not all the way in you may as well be all the way out and that's that's what he has to do first of all never mind who he might fight next and, and all that kind of thing he has to work out whether he actually wants to do this or not Okay, we're not going to dwell too long on that card because obviously there was a second card on the Friday as well. It was a good win for Chloe Watson who picked up the EBU European flyweight title with a win over Justine Lallemond. Um, but we're going to head over to the Queensbury card and stick him with the heavyweights. Barry, another first round demolition job from Moses Atama. 7-0, and five knockouts to close out his professional year. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? It's good. I, I think that's the important thing for him, just keeping really active. You know, he looks like a real talent. And I know people are going to keep, I keep don't put no pressure on the kid, but people are going to keep talking about beating Mike Tyson's record, which is easier now because there's more opportunities, but also people don't, and actually Mike Tyson's son, I was with him last time I was in Saudi, and he made the point, people don't box regular enough to maybe do that anymore. And um, But it's then it also it's easier to get up the rankings. Within 10 fights, you can be number one in the world and not box anyone, can you? So depending on who your friend is. And so it's but he looked really good he looks you no know, and he looks a bit nasty i like it i like i like it there's a lot to like about him and, we, and, and we'll see now they got that if they are have amb if they do have ambitions of him getting to world world level pretty soon well what's, what's he got 18 months or something yeah i think it's uh may 2025 okay yeah yeah well it won't be long before they have to step him up to just show him off now i think that's a good idea showing off against people who are you no know, might have winning records but they're not that good and he'll blast them out of there. You see now, once that guy got hit, he, he went, oh, this is not for me. <laughs> I can't understand it because he has, he's accurate. He's accurate, the power, he punches from good angles, or he punches down with his chops down with his shots. So, yeah, and he and he, he does it when you feel like you're safe as well. Like you can just slide into the distance really good. But we'll see what it's like when he steps up the levels. But right now, he's fantastic to watch and, and you can see why they're all getting excited about him. Andy, I'm going to come to you. I mentioned, Barry just mentioned there about some of his, um, some of Atalma's early opponents. I kind of had this conversation with a few people at the weekend because I'm, I'm certainly of the opinion that I think it's been a very good year, very solid professional debut uh, debut year in the pros for Moses Atalma. He's had those blowouts, but he also went the distance with Dovdashenko and Espindolo. Kind of we know what sort of level those guys are. How would you assess his first 12 months as a pro? It's been good. I think they matched it well. I think there have been a few opponents in there as well who they would have expected um, him to have gone a few rounds with and that hasn't happened. And it's just the way that he manages to find a finish. As as Barry said, he, he's he got a good variety and he is a really good finisher. Mm. I was impressed with him in Saudi. I was, I was sitting there watching that. And again, that was a guy who they thought might take him a few rounds and, and didn't. Um, and I think 
the activity rate is good, isn't it? Or as good as it kind of can be in in at the moment, given that he's always going to be boxing on big shows. I mean, Tyson when when he when he won his title was twenty seven and zero after eighteen twenty months as a pro, which is incredible. But you're not that's never going to happen again. You wouldn't have thought. What you wonder with him is what's going to happen, obviously, when he gets hit clean. And, he'll have been hit, and often. And often, yeah. He'll, he'll have been hit clean in sparring. We all know about the sparring he's done, but we also know that you know, sparring is sparring. <laughs> it's not the same thing, so that's, that's what we don't know. He didn't have any senior amateur experience, which I'm never a big fan of, but at the same time, he's done absolutely everything right. And when you talk to him, he does have that kind of old head on young shoulders. He seems like he understands um, more than most 18-year-olds do. Um, that he's got a kind of mentality wise it feels to me like he like he knows what boxing is and even though he's got big confidence in himself he's not going to get carried away that he knows that at heavyweight particularly things can happen um, it's just a question of what, what do you do with him next really yeah, there was talk after the fight, Barry, about Sol Dakers, of course, English champion, uh, had a win over Michael Webster the last time out. Is that is that a realistic next step? Do you think that's good progression for him? I think it's, just, okay, it's a big step, I think, because you're boxing a guy who can, who can move a lot. But Dakers is not a massive puncher, so I think that's a, not a bad idea if you're gonna if you're gonna start stepping up. But if you're talking about fighting for world titles within or, or getting close to world titles within twelve to eighteen months, then yeah, definitely that's the next fight. And yeah, it's good. Th- why not? Why not? I don't. I don't know if they'll take it. Dakers, to be honest, because where do they go? If they, if they lose, no, that's when those. That's when those fights for Dakers. If he loses, you got to wait. For, you know, if a, if a Tama goes on and does really great, then it, that loss doesn't look bad. Mm. If a Tama falls at the, at the next hurdle or a couple of hurdles time, it's a real. You just copied by a young kid on his way up, but you should have put him in his place. But they actually, they're probably about the similar. Record. I don't know what, what's Dakers he's only about 11 and 0 he's something like that right, yeah. that's very similar isn't it yeah. so yeah but that's, and also training for those 10 rounds it's a whole different you, know, it's not, you just tra- you just train really but I mean you have to adapt your training a little bit when you're doing longer distances and, and what you want and what you're looking for and, and how you approach it and that'll be good practice for him going forward so yeah I think it's um, it's a good move it'll be a good fight he wouldn't have all his own way but ultimately you just think the way, with his balance and his, his movement for such a big fight he doesn't look he's so like was he six four? Yeah, he doesn't look at it. He just looks no, six it's one, doesn't he? He's it's real wide, built, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, he's like stocky. He's actually stocky. Everything's big, isn't it? Mm. Big chest, big arms, big shoulders. So he, he looks shorter than he is. And he, and he got stumpy arms. I mean, not stumpy arms. You haven't got stumpy arms. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got, got stumpy arms. No, he, 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 he doesn't like get a massive long reach. You know, it looks like it looks because like, maybe it's got all the muscle, but yeah. But but he knows like he he has a great judgment of the distance. So when he throws, he knows. That he's going to land. That's why he, he throws from far out, but he, he he's quite confident he's going to hit you, and that you can teach that, and that's what makes stand. That's what might stand him out. So someone like Dakers, who you'd be confident to slide forward because Dakers is a guy who's not going to really commit too much. Yeah, I think because even though, even though he's six four, he doesn't box tall, does he? He doesn't box with his hands up and back and drop no. that behind. So he's down here, so he's yeah. always quite crouched yeah. down anyway, isn't he? I feel like physically there's quite a lot more to come as well because when you look at him, he is big, but. Chest wise, he, he does kind of that. That's where he sort of does look eighteen yeah. if you look kind of closely at him. So I think there's 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 quite a lot of power to to come there as well. Yeah, I'm I'm a little bit surprised. I'm not going to try and sneak him onto that December the twenty third card. Um, sure, he could have beat Mark Demori if the opportunity was there. <laughs> was there to him <laughs> yeah, to get on that confident. card? You'd be yeah. confident of that. That's the most left field fight ever. That is. Yeah, Philip Hagovich versus Mark Demori. Um, very interesting. That's, one. Like you, that's like you're doing very good in your last fight, Phil. So we'll just give you this. Guy. <laughs> Doesn't want to risk that ranking, does he? No. There we go. Um, sticking with uh, the Queensbury card on Friday, just while we're hovering around the subject, because I do want to. We've spoken about it on several instances in the past, but Royston Barney Smith, another kind of well thought of, highly touted prospect, so had a another win in the third round on Friday night another fighter who didn't have senior amateur experience now kind of getting into this situation with Vital we're already talking about him boxing for an English title 
Obviously, neither of them had that senior amateur experience. I think one of the caution retailers we've had in the heavyweight division is Daniel Dubois, and it's obviously running into Joe Joyce. But how do you think the balance is working for those guys? Do you push a Talmer quicker because he's the heavyweight? Do you hold him back because he's the heavyweight? How, how do you go about it, Barry, do you think? Well, you tend to, the old fashioned way was heavyweights, you know, go longer, they mature mm. at, the, at, the, at the later age. So you sort of hold them back a bit. But I, I think it's probably the, the, that flip. I, I'd push a Talmer more than I would. Royston, Barney Smith, Royston, sorry. Yeah, I would, yeah. But I you know he's ready. You know, you've got to give him an opportunity. He's boxing well, he's looking good, and, and you know, he's fast hands and he punches now. And so, yeah, you've got to give him his, his opportunity. But he needs, is he feather or super feather? Who, uh, Barney Smith? Yeah. Feather, I think. I think that's where he'll be boxing. I, he he needs someone like a, like a Ronnie Clark of his era. He needs someone yeah. like that who's a good, who's a, that's a, maybe a too, too much of a step up. This, but someone like that who's. Super feather. Good, there he goes. So this you get, get, get Ronnie Clark back out. And he'll take it as well. He'll drive down. He drives all over the place. <laughs> it's a mad he, he drives to Ireland. Oh, I don't even fight. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. But like, you know, someone like who's, who's very tough, especially in this case, is beatable. But will drag you into those later rounds. But at some point, will make you work for the win. And and that that'll be a real. You, you can sort of gauge him then about that, that that physical strength. That's what that's what I'm trying to get. What, what Andy's talking about, because when they unbox a senior, you're just not quite sure if they have that physical strength or fortitude to when when they when they the weights put against them or they or they cope with that skill for skill all day long. They're happy with that. But when it comes to being a more physical battle, you're not used to it. And you might panic a bit. I guess I use the word panic all the time, but I think it's so apt for boxing. Cause that's that's what happens most of the time. Yeah, but I think you could push him forward. But I wouldn't go. I wouldn't again. I wouldn't go crazy. He's still young, and then you've got a lot. You've got a lot of time to work with him. But you can. You know, so I'd be at the end of next year. I'd be looking at depending on how many fights he has. Then I'd be looking at those international things and starting to get him on that sort of ro- roster. Elsewhere on the cards, uh, we were, oh, I can't remember whether it was, it was last week or the week before, I'm not sure, um, where we saw the, I guess, one side of the audition for a domestic super fight in Mark Chamberlain. Uh, Andy, this past weekend, we saw Sam Noakes, the other half of that, of course, against Carlos Perez, winning by fourth round stoppage in a bit of a strange fight, I thought it was. Um, I think Mr. Perez was um, was an interesting opponent for Sam Noakes, but another stoppage win for Sam Noakes and, and remains perfect so far as a pro. Yeah, and there's, I spent a little bit of time with him around press conferences and stuff like that, and and he's 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 just a good all round package. Sam Noakes, he, mm. he sells a lot of tickets. He's good to watch. Uh, again, I think he's, I think he's quite grounded. I don't think he really gets too carried away with anything, uh, but at the same time, he'll be very very ambitious. So, I'm not really sure. It's difficult to know really how how far he can go but but that's that's the enjoyment of it a lot of the time and you can say that about so many fighters i don't know if they will make that fight between him and chamberlain soon or or not it's kind of tricky to second guess promoters when it comes to that and and whether they do or they don't can often tell you quite a lot about how good they think they are so I, I would probably say that we're not going to see that soon. Noakes and Chamberlain. I think they'll probably keep them running in parallel lines for a bit longer. We saw on the broadcast at the weekend, didn't we, when we had Hamza Shiraz, who was, of course, being kind of groomed for that big Denzel Bentley fight until Nathan Heaney had other ideas. Um, and he was kind of saying, look, make that fight next, make that fight next. You know, you don't want to miss <laughs> out. And then we had, of course, Carl Frampton, who made the very good point about himself and Scott Quigg. And if they had have fought at British level when Frampton was chasing Quigg around, they would have earned a fraction of what they eventually uh, when they un- had a unification bout so it is that swings and roundabouts isn't it Barry um, yeah I bet I, I do uh, he's, and he's right but it's too early to even sec- even guess that where these two will go I know world level goes speed. there's no European level now though there might be for these two but but I mean it goes from British to world quite yeah. that's, that's straight away now and I think so but there's there's no you can you could see the thing in Frampton and we've already been a world champion and, and you could see where him and Quig might go not so much Quig, definitely Frampton. So the holding back made sense, especially for the one of them. But these two, I, I, I fight them now. And to be fair, Noakes said, you know, it's the fights we want to be involved in. In the interview, you know, we, th- these are the fights we want to be involved in. And why? Why? Well, I'm happy. I'm sure. I think he wants it. I want it. So let's do it. I think they should. You know, it's a it's a good domestic fight. That's what it is. Like it's not, and and it'd be cheaper 
for Queensbury, by the way, to do it now than they will to do it in a couple of years' time. Because again, I don't know, I understand who sells tickets, I don't know if these still, or many, or many tickets he sells. I think, you know, it's the top of the bill in, on a on a smaller show, isn't it? It might not be a top, I might be wrong, I don't really know, but it might not be a top of the bill on a big arena show, or will, or will it, maybe? It's hard to, hard to gauge, but I think it's a good fight. And Nooks is good, he's strong, but you can always get carried away. When someone's so physically strong as he is, at, at one level, they just blast through everybody and look great. And then sometimes they step up a little bit and and then they realise it takes a bit more than just having that heavy hands to do it. Like, you've got to have a bit more. Um, and he might have it, but we haven't really seen it yet because his power, certainly the weight in the more than his, more than his snap, more the weight in the shots, just puts people in a defensive mode automatically. But, yeah, but it, will, will he be able to do that against Chamberlain? I think you probably put him the favourite, maybe, but... You know, I'm not quite sure. But it's a good fight. It's one of the reasons why we want to see it. Um, we won't see it. Absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fi final one from Friday night. Barry, going to come to you for Gavin Gwynn, the new European lightweight champion. Well, I think it's fair to say that he didn't have everything his own way against 47-year-old Emiliano Marsili. No, let's forget about his age. No, he's 47. That's a big. It's a big talking point. But once the bell starts, that's irrelevant. Mm. You know, you get, you know, the fact that he's a really tricky, awkward opponent who's, who's relatively... I think every shot he threw, I thought... No, not every shot. But quite, when he jumps in with the shot, I thought there was a bit of snap in his punches early in the round, my silly. But he's awkward. But, but Gwyn's not the, not the hardest target to find. He never has been. So he, his whole ethos is to just make you work really hard and walk you down and then... You know, if he can't stop you, he'll he'll he'll, he'll try and nick up some. He'll try and, he wants to win every round, mm. but they're well aware that he might not because he's not the he haven't got the fastest reactions. But then he'll wear you down, and then he takes over like he did with 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 Sean McComb and and, and others. So we can do that. Made him quit, didn't he? And but you, know, you got the win. That's the end of the day. I don't like. I I think Frampton was a bit over harsh on him. I think I think he was too harsh. I think he, well, that's how he fights. You know, if you've watched him regular, you'd see that's he, he looked better sometimes when he has an opponent who will stand in front of him. But you know, he, had, he got a guy there who's fleet footed who kept changing angles all the time, and because he's because he's where to be one paced, well, he is one paced, uh, Gavin Gwynn. He's, and he hasn't got the fastest of reactions, then he has to do it his own way, and that's how he fights. It just you either help him to look good, or you make him look awful. No, no, not awful. You make it hard for him. But the physical presence he has in the end does wear you down. And he was getting to him, but he's not saying he would have, though. Mm. You know, it's just one of those that people go, oh, you know, he was mad, he was behind and he was behind and he looked like he was on his way to losing, let's be honest. But there's still more rounds to go. There's still a third of the fight left. So he might have got, he might have won the rest of that and maybe got the win. I didn't look likely, to be honest. I think, I think that Marcelli was, was doing well. I knew you could see the, the yeah. shoulder. Like people, I didn't see it, obviously, on the Saturday. And people were telling me on the Saturday, um, I was someone else on the, it was a Friday night show wasn't it? people tell me on the Saturday that the guy swallowed it but when I saw his shoulder that's popped out clearly popped out so you know and why would he swallow a fight that he's I know the pressure was immense but he's winning so you know yeah yeah that that didn't make any sense to me either that 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 argument. No, he clearly why, why would you could he? see him he like, well. you could see him just yeah. sit there and they were like look if you if you, you then you you lose and he was like Oh, like I can't do. I can't. Like, there's no way I can carry on. You yeah. just see the little sort of look, at, look of resignation. Yeah, I, I, think, I guess what you're hoping in that situation, although you actually, you know, you know the rules, you're just kind of. Is there any chance that this is going to be ruled an accidental foul? That mm. this has happened via an accidental foul, and we'll go to the cards. In which case, I'll win. You know, in 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 the heat of the moment, boxers often, athletes in general, often aren't thinking in those terms aren't really able to think in those terms but the, the corner i'm sure we're probably just hoping that maybe that could that that could happen but um yeah there was no foul involved it was just it's just something that it's just a, it's just a rough and tumble of a contact sport so he was unlucky wasn't he i mean it's it's as simple as that he was he'll be absolutely gutted about it but there was enough of the fight left um for us not to be able to say with absolute certainty what would have happened um, because four rounds out of 12 like Barry said it's it's a third of the fight it, it did look like he was going to win more silly um, I mean but remember if fighting Derry right. Matthews all those years yeah. ago God, it's, I mean, he's been you know he's been around a really long time and he's obviously kept himself in really good condition and he's away from home and you know it'll, it'll be it'll be a difficult one to it will be a difficult one to take but um 
in boxing, you know, sometimes things go your way and sometimes they don't. And on Friday night, it, it Gavin Gwynn hung in there and and it, and it went his way. And you take the win and you take the belt and you and you move on and you just don't give a fuck what anybody's got to say about it, if you're him, to be honest, do you? No, absolutely. Uh, I think you could see afterwards when he paraded an EBU title around how much it meant to him. Um, I didn't think it was as, as one-sided as certainly some did. I feel like I felt like Gwyn was really starting to get to him in six, six and seven. Uh, Marcelli was still in there, but he was more trying to punch him off him than he was trying to outbox him like he was in the early rounds, is, is kind of how I saw it. Um, didn't necessarily see the card that had Gwyn ahead, but I did think it was a little bit closer um, than than the uh, the commentary did. Uh, Barry, just over to you for Gavin Gwynn. What next for him? Obviously, now the EBU title at lightweight, hot division, lots of good fighters in and around him at that weight class. Where next? Well, he's going to box Nugs or Chambers, isn't he? That's what's going to happen. That's, that's, that's where they've signed him, I think, for that, for his titles. I, th- I think. I mean, he, he won't like to hear that, but that's the, I think that's the reality of it. They haven't signed it for him, are they? They're not thinking, right, we're going to go down to Wales now, we're going to build a fortress in Wales for promotions because they, they never want to do that. No, no, no promoter wants to do that. But, um, yeah, so I think that's just one of those. I think one of those is going to be next, which is a good fight. And and also, I wouldn't be shocked if he gets, if he walk, if he gets a win either. No, as I said, I think he could beat both of those yeah. guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he definitely. Could. It'd be He's confident a test, if you're yeah. in the if you're in the Gavin. Gw- it might not be the fight that you'd want if you're in the Gavin Gwynn team. You probably want you again, like we always say on here. You want to be looking up rather than with respect yeah. to to Noakes and Chamberlain looking at the young pups beneath you. But we'd fancy his chances. But, but you also got to be realise where no, you got something. You got to remember where you were and where you were going mm. and the opportunities that you weren't getting and now you are getting them. And you might be the one with all the titles, but but you're on the B side and you might be signed with that promoter, but you're not his priority. The guy you're fighting at. And that's not, you can have a bit of a chip in your shoulder for it, but you, if you're realistic about it, you just go, it doesn't matter, as long as I'm fighting, as long as I'm getting on these shows, I'm on these big bills, I'm going to top the bill, you know, in the York Hall or whatever, again, or a, or a smaller venue, or, or maybe a Saturday night show, you know, and, and it's great, and he, and he gets, and he'll get the opportunity to fight for, and he'll get more money than he, than he thought he would have, and he'll go, okay, I'll fight him, but I'm on this. And he might get a little bit more for it. But that's, that's, that's what they're going to do, they're going to try and get him beat, I think. Because they're going, they're going to see Nokes and Chamber, especially Nokes, as, as the, the, that's that's their more marketable fighter, isn't it for them? That makes total business sense. But Gavin Green's got also a dangerous opponent, so you know, I, I hope if they do make him, I hope he wins. Not because I don't dislike that. I don't dislike. I don't know Gavin Green from Adam, by the way, but but he's Welsh, isn't he? So I got to back. You got to back I mean, it you'd, you'd make him a big favourite in 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 the yeah. fight against yeah, either one of those yeah. two. He'd have Far to be. Seasoned. A, yeah, you know. look at you know. I remember doing his fight against Joe Cordina and. He came out of that, and I remember just thinking to myself, you know, Cordina's yeah, yeah, yeah. not a British level fighter, so this guy can definitely win a British title. Was 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 my takeaway from that? So it's been good to see him stick at it and and get there. And now he's a European champion, and and that chip on your shoulder that that you mentioned there, that that's why I kind of like either one of those fights for him is that I don't think motivation will be any kind of a problem. Like you say, you look at of the road he's had to get to where he is now he may well be the kind of person who relishes the thought of thinking okay look I know what the script is here I, I get it I understand what's happening here I know what you think and I know what you want but I'm not going to give it you but every fight, almost every you know, I'm not going to give it you yeah. and sooner whether you like it or not I am going to become your guy you can give me as many of your guys as you like on the way but that's what's going to happen Mm. I mean, he's, he's played the role of party pooper before. I mean, everybody thought we mentioned Sean McComb earlier. Mm. That was a fight that Sean McComb was supposed to win with, you know, with respect to Gavin Gwynn. Um, okay, that brings to an end our Friday night section of today's show. Um, on to Saturday and to Belfast. Andy, going to come to you. The Boxing Show are back with all of our fine predictions, getting everything right and industry insight and all of that other great stuff. Absolutely none of us uh, predicted a win for Jordan Gill and none of us especially predicted Jordan Gill by stoppage against Michael Conlon this past weekend. First and foremost, what a fantastic performance for Jordan Gill. I think we can all, you know, I think there was probably a few misty eyes at the um, post-fight interview with Jordan Gill. It was fantastic. You really see what it meant to him. But what a massive win at this stage of his career. It was huge, wasn't it? It was was absolutely huge and... I've been covering his career for quite for quite a long time. I remember doing him on a few Channel Five undercards, um, 
2015, 2016, calling him up and having a chat and all that kind of thing. And then he started boxing on Sky, did, did a, quite a few of his fights on Sky. And you, you, you're around somebody enough whereby you get a feel of what they're like. And he's very likable. Um, his dad as well, Paul, you know, they're just enjoyable company, good to be around. Uh, and you come away from the vibe they give you is that, you know, you you want them to do well. You know, you want you want you want him to come away from his boxing career, and this is this is true of almost any fighter you, you spend enough time with, where you want them to come away from it satisfied and having done what they wanted to do. Maybe not absolutely every single thing they wanted to do, but they come out of the other end happy with what they've done and at peace with what they've what they've done. And I think that this win Whatever happens next gives him a good chance of being able to do that because he's had a terrible year. I, I didn't know about all of the things that have been going on, but um, yeah, it was it was quite emotional that that post fight interview, and, and it was a really good performance. And no, none of us got it got it right. There was always going to be a question mark over Conlon um, and the punch resistance given the two knockouts because. Knockouts do something to you, as we as we talked about last week. And when he put him down in the second round and really shook him, it was a heavy knockdown. I kind of felt from that point onwards that it was going to be very, very hard for Conlon. Recovering from something like that is really difficult. It hardly ever happens. And when you saw that Gil shook him every time he hit him after that, Conlon dug in and... and worked as hard as he could to try and pay him back and make some kind of impact himself and did win some rounds I thought but it was a matter of time it was a matter of time you you can't 10 rounds after what happened in the second round it can't be done it, it just can't be done and, and Jordan Gill knew that and he was happy to to buy his time and wait for his opportunities and yeah yeah, it was just kind of looking at him in the ring at the end, you know. I didn't I didn't get misty eyed, but I just remember, you know, this kind of fresh faced, um good looking kid without a mark on him a few years ago. He's still a good looking guy, but you know, the nose is a little bit misshapen these days. He was marked up at the end of the fight. He's been through the mill, hasn't he? You know, he's he's been through the mill, as all fighters do. Um, and he's bearing some scars. But that that was a massive, massive, massive win for him. Barry, uh, going to come over to you, obviously, as our resident uh, man on the ground in Belfast at the weekend. Uh, first question, as always, when there's any boxing in Belfast, how was the atmosphere? Can I invoice for Saturday? He's got <laughs> man on the ground. I don't know. Take the piss. Good atmosphere? Yeah, it was good. It, it's been better, I've got to be honest. But um, it was good. It was a good atmosphere. It was good. It was good. It was quite busy as well. Belfast is a great boxing city. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. And, and, and it did feel like, and we all thought that, you know, it was about to do who well, well, who had the most left but you you tend to think that Collins box at the higher level consistently and, and, and has more skill but his resistance is gone like like Gil can punch but he's not a puncher that's a difference but um, he was good he had the, regardless of what my scorecard said he had, he had the, I thought he had the first good he had, he had a good first round it was on the back of our sorry to interrupt it was on the back of our, our pod last week where we were talking about scoring fights during fights exactly. as well yeah, yeah. I've stood in the back of the stage by the way and also that wasn't that wasn't what I was saying so. which is something that you also said last week yeah. as well which yeah. can happen but um, it must be my accent <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. but uh, anyway it's um, but I thought he had a good first round and he had a brilliant <laughs> second round but I, I mean and Andy were talking oh, like down the, in the canteen earlier, you know, saying like, then whatever did I thought, I thought Colin did all right then the next couple of rounds. Though he was busier, but there's always a feeling that just Gil was just waiting to take over because like he just you know, Colin was boxing with a panic. So it looked like you know he, he was landing good shots. He'd been far busier, and then you know, the fifth, certainly the sixth round, Gil you know, took over again, and then that's, that's you know. It's a lovely shot. You almost have faint with this shot and he chops down with it, doesn't he? It sort of reminded me a little bit of the Lee Wood shot against Josh Warrington, where he sort yeah. of feeds him the backhand and then whips. Yeah. It's just sort of that chopping trajectory coming down. Yeah. It was a lovely shot. So, yeah, it was, and what a win. In that, and forget about it, in that atmosphere, by the way, that can be intimidating for you. 
especially this stage of career, because you're talking about girl Collins' resistance is gone. There was a question about girls as well. Let's mm. not forget that. Yeah, definitely. And, and, you know, but he had a fast start. It was important for him to get a fast start. And even though, like, you know, he took to them and, and maybe allowed, maybe allowed Conlon to wear himself out, maybe. I don't think that was the case. Conlon just, you know, with that adrenaline rush and panic of, of, of you not know, being hurt and not shot and not wanting to take a punch, he was just really busy all the time in, like, the third and fourth, certainly, and possibly the fifth. But you just see that girl was they always like, the whole feeling everyone was feeling it just waited for something every time he got hit he didn't look right and then yeah so he just but so then and then but when you grow in confidence you start to walk forward and you feel like oh I do I, like for girl I do take a punch I'm not worried about it. these shots are not hurting me because then Colin's throwing with a, with a view then to move away because he don't because he don't want to get hit because he knows he's, he's just been hurt because and I'm not done I wouldn't mean I wouldn't have been shocked he would have stayed down I think I mean not stayed down and he couldn't get up. But no, that I know when, like they've had too many ad fights or too many, you know, and you just go and there's a scar from the last defeat and you just go, oh, I'm not going through this again. But he never keeps brave, kid Conlon, and, and he's had a. It's weird with Conlon because he's had a good career, but it should have been better. Mm. He's had some big, massive, huge nights, and you know he's and he almost got to the very top, but he never quite did. And a guy that with that skill level never won a world title is always one of those weird, you know, weird things in boxing. You think you know there's fighters who've beat him. And fighters who were before and after him were not nowhere near as skillful as he is. But it just shows you boxing, it doesn't know skill not skills not everything. Dedication's not everything. Luck is everything. The right place at the right time, you move to the wrong place, you know, you have boxing a perfect fight and someone hits you. You know, you got you can't factor in what Lee Wood can do and you know, obviously you no know, Jordan Gill who were quite quite similar stories actually, to be fair. To be, you know, really honestly. But he, but he, he, he was nice to compose Gil. No, he wasn't. He didn't have that crowd affect him at all. He, he went out really. He, he had a fast start, like he should have had a fast start, and have, and his confidence grew. And even then, when there was some of those rounds he, that he maybe maybe threw away or, or, or lost, he was still just. He felt like whatever we all felt. I'm just going to get him in a minute, just like this person who's texting me. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to get it if they carry on. Uh, Andy, going to come to you. Uh, we're going to talk about Jordan Gill because we we inevitably always do focus on, particularly when there's the big upsets. We always focus on what went wrong, um, but a lot went right for Jordan Gill this past weekend, um, and that's a win that really puts him up there in in the conversation for some big big fights at one thirty now. Yeah, it does. It does because if if Conlon had one, then we'd be talking about maybe. Um, him fighting Lee Wood again, um, you know, Cordina is there as well. Of course, he, he would go into that round robin or you know, quartet of British fighters who who could just make some money fighting each other, basically, because there's titles involved there too. But it was a really good performance. It was a really good performance. It's slightly different to how he's done things before. You know, he, he was operating more as a kind of pressure fighter than. That we've seen him before. Yeah, it, it just, I mean, I don't know. I find it difficult to know off the back of that how I think he would fare against Wood or Cordina. I think we feel like Wood's going to fight Warrington. Yeah, he we? wouldn't box Wood yeah. anyway. They're, they're big, big yeah. buddies, aren't they? Yeah, big but buddies. in terms of that... But that, that level, yeah. Two shit two shitholes. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> well, if they had to fight each other, no, it's okay. <laughs> it's, um, but like, like a Navarrete or a Sharky yeah, Foster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I don't... I can't really make up my mind what that win tells me about how he would get on against the likes of those fighters you, mm. just, you just mentioned. But... Um, he just needs to enjoy this one. He just needs to enjoy this one first because he mentioned the things that have been happening outside the ring and, and that, that's obviously going to be very difficult. Um, he's with a new training team uh, and it's the same for Conlon and you suspect that the reason that they both found themselves moving in a new direction was probably because the people they were with before and Adam Booth and Dave Colwell might have told them something they didn't want to hear, which was that they felt maybe that it was time to hang them up. Um, I'd imagine that could have been the reason. But uh, he's got another chapter now. He's got another chapter now. And I'm not absolutely sure what will come next for him, to be honest. I think he gets called Dina. I, 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 don't, I don't think he wins. And I'm not saying that because he's Welsh. Because he's from Cardiff, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's um, 
because I think they they approached that fight like they knew Conlon couldn't take a shot because mm. he boxed a little bit different, a bit more aggressive maybe, and he just he thought they and and no, so they got it really spot on. They really did because there's a risk there that they take a shot as well. But um, and he's put himself in the window now to deserve a shot at maybe I don't know how high Con- Conlon was still ranked, but um. Oh, in Super Featherweight movie, nowhere. He, he wouldn't have been, but he's still a bit. No. He's a bit yeah. You know, so he gets in the, so, like so I think, Yeah, and I and I think I think for me, I think, and obviously, I can't see Wood wanting to box Cordina because the, the, if Wood's talking about maybe one last fight, and it might be that, but whoever knows, then that's a that's a hard fight that he might not win. He might, oh, you know, with Wood, who knows with Wood? <laughs> but um, he wants another world title, but the. The warrant the fight, he's been there before he knows what he can do. Though he was getting out box quite quite conclusively as well, this ad. But he still got the win, didn't matter relevant. But it's a bigger money fight. It's a bigger occasion. Because yeah. they're two bigger bigger names with bigger fan bases. So I think Cordina might be the one with the world title sitting on the sidelines, going, Well, where's my fight? Because I was, I had a Shaky Foster, but now he's signed with the SPN. So I can't there's no, no one's fight, I don't blame anyone, but that's just how it's worked out. Yeah. Now all his all the champions and his thing are all on different broadcasters. Yeah. You know? Gassy you know Hector Garcia just got his gasket, yeah, Roach, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So you know I, mean? I don't wear I don't wear Roach is tied up. Now he may, he's obviously must be a PBC fighter straight away. Lower at the minute. But, but there's there's potential yeah. for him to. But either way, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know, I maybe mean, they can drag him. Otherwise, Cordina, you know, the Gil would be a viable option, and mm. certainly for the promoter, because that's a that's you no. Know, he gives he gives Cordina his world title defense that he's probably contracted to do over so many what periods of time. I would thought I guarantee this many defenses in X amount of years or months, and it's a cheaper fight to make. That's, it's hard to say it, but it's true, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. And, yeah. and and also, it's a winnable fight for Joe. You know, Gil, Gil goes in a massive underdog. Like I said on the broadcast, he goes in an underdog against anybody at the, at the highest level, a super featherweight. But he was an underdog on that night as well. A massive mm. underdog, by the way. No one gave him a chance. Nobody did. And that, cause that was the right, that was the sensible approach. Well, <laughs> McConnell, yeah, like he's brilliant. He was always just the worry about that, but there's worry about that with, with Gil as well after the Martinez thing and, mm. and, the, and the career he's had. He's had a tough hard career as well. Mm. And he's looked fantastic and he's looked vulnerable in, in equal measure in, in his career. So, But at the lower levels of Conlon, that's what it looked like to me. And he did the bump and, and, he, and that's the magic of boxing because sometimes people just turn up and just did, and, and outdo themselves and he did and, and brilliant for him. And, and there was no, he was, just, he, was, he was fantastic. He was, he was bossing the fight. That's the truth. What about Jordan Gill versus Alpha Barrett. Oh yeah, but yeah, that's a good fight. It is, but Alpha Barrett don't take that, does he? I mean, he thinks you know he, he fancy he could beat Gill, but he he's another one. Oh, there's pressure on. I think Eddie Hearn, who's my mate, a lovely guy, <laughs> <laughs> Big Ed. I don't talk to him. I don't, like I say, I don't talk to him at shows. Yeah, I avoid do, him man. like the plague because I just think don't upset him if you don't know I exist. You know you can't get rid of me, can he? You know what I mean? <laughs> but um, but uh, so anyway, but um, he's. Was a Zelfa Barrett? Uh, they got because he's kind of think, where's my world title shot? After the Rackamore thing, I thought I was getting Cordina. They're all queuing up for Cordina's going. I don't want to be boxing them. Cause I want to be boxing. And that's one of the reasons why I suggested that because does Cordina think? Oh, I just boxed. Maybe box Vasquez. Oh, I was told it was going to be a big one next, and I want Navarrete or I want Wood. Do I want to box Jordan Gill? Do I want to box Zelfa Barrett? Like, they go look at the back of the just beat though. That's what they'll say. They go look at Zelfa Barrett. Zelfa Barrett just beat. But look at Gill. Gill just beat Michael Conlon. You no, know, the you no, know, the of Belfast mm. right now. You no, know, and and forget about where he was in his career. You no, know, the damage he'd had. Just be like Michael Conlon. And, and he just beat him in his own backyard. Now he's going to come to your backyard and he's going to beat you and you're knocking, no one beat you in Cardiff and it goes on in Cardiff and I get to go home for a weekend. <laughs> so it's all about me really. But and no, I think, but I think they, set, they, can set, they can sell it that, that way to Yeah, him. for sure. The fact that he knocked him out as well. Yeah. You, you have the viral capability, don't you? you have something and Cordina's a massive super fan. But by the way, I think Cordina should be a light, should move up. That's another reason why we we'll kind of put it forth because we've spoke about that last time as well. Um, after the Vasquez fight in particular, there was, he was discussions, flat. yeah, discussions about him jumping up to one three five. But as we've all said on numerous instances, you know, when you become a world champion, somebody like Joe, a lot of the time your value is in your belt, yeah, right? Rather than him, yeah. it is, yeah, for sure. Um, right now, uh, we've discussed Jordan Gill onto no, uh, to discussed, Michael so Conlon. Discussed Joe Cody in the end, didn't we? Yeah, that's, <laughs> all right, that's fine. We'll probably he'll probably get a relationship <laughs> with Eddie Hearn. <laughs> yeah. Undeniable chemistry, yeah, chemistry yeah, between yeah, no, Barry me Jones and, my best and Hearn and Jones. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and he's been in a room with a pair of them. You can just feel the crackling intensity. There. There's no need for words, is there? That's thinks, why you don't talk to him. He thinks I'm Barry McGuigan. He, he, he said to me, do you, do you speak to Jim McDonald anymore? I don't know. No, but it still always reminds me of when we sat in Vegas. For, it was Spence Crawford, wasn't it? And Dan Canobbio. Dan, yeah, yeah. Dan Canobbio, shout out Dan Canobbio. From, Pun, uh, from CompuBox came over to Compu Barry. CompuBox, the TDB, I switched up. He said, Com- <laughs> said CompuBox, I'm like, oh, fucking hell. Yeah, he went like that. Yeah. And then when he said, oh, my dad said that you're fighting, um, he said you're fight against, what, it, what did he say it was against? Steve Cruz. The, yeah, Stevie Cruz fight, yeah. Oh, he brilliant. said it was the hottest weather ever. That was it, yeah, because I couldn't remember what he hot, said. It was the hottest <laughs> thing, yeah. yeah. So it was the hottest fight he'd ever been at. And I was like, he thinks you're Barry McGregor. I don't get embarrassed. I don't get embarrassed about it because you know I'm small and Barry, and I made me look a little bit like him. And I, and I so I go, well, that's, that's, I don't mind it. I go, I never, never, never offends me. But, um, Do you just let it go? Did you correct him? No. Or did you let it go? I, no, no I we told, corrected. I, told him, I, don't want, <laughs> I, I feel embarrassed for them because they might be embarrassed. But he went, oh, sorry, and just walked away. Then. Yeah, he was fine. <laughs> yeah, he had, yeah, absolutely no, no issue. I thought, it's I thought, all the same thing to me. I thought, I thought and I, at the time, I thought, Dan, you fucking prick. I want to punch you in the back of the head. That's why at the time <laughs> I thought that. When he came over, I didn't mind. I did, oh, no, I'm the wrong guy. And, oh, okay, I didn't realise. When he said, oh, okay, and walked away without even like a sorry or anything, I just thought, fucking turd. <laughs> Wait, let me show you a power shot with the front hand. He <laughs> would argue. He would argue. Not off you. But <laughs> off <laughs> you. <laughs> Let's move along from uh, revisiting that hilarious moment. Um, Andy, well, hilarious. It was funny. It was mildly funny. <laughs> yeah, in, in your geeky life, maybe. I don't have a lot going on, Barry. But anyway, mm-hmm. Andy, uh, we're going to come to you. Michael Conlon. Um, I think we all kind of alluded to the fact that this was a was kind of a make or break for both guys going into this fight, I think it's fair to say. Um, I think I, I told I mentioned the story about Jamie Conlon saying, you know, when, when I lost to Anka Haas, I kind of knew that was going to be it for me. Conlon's two previous losses, obviously both by stoppage, came against world champions in world title fights. This wasn't that. Um, and somebody of his, certainly his amateur and Olympic pedigree, it's difficult to see where Michael Conlon goes now. Unfortunately, it is. And... I think Jamie has got a really quite important role to play now because I, th- I feel like he will be saying to Michael, I think that's enough. I think that's enough. We've got to think about your health because that punch resistance, we could all see it against Jordan Gill. It wasn't It wasn't there. There's, there's some, if you like, in terms of what you can do in the boxing ring, some irreversible damage has been done and that's enough now. And I feel like in the immediate aftermath, Michael may well agree with him (laughs) because he's been in boxing for a long time. And boxers are generally at their most honest, I find, in the immediate aftermath. They, They can be very philosophical about about defeat and 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 they know the nature of the business but it's as a bit of time passes that's when the problem will come a few weeks down the line maybe when the bruises have faded and you start to think about it some more and the fact that you haven't yet achieved what you wanted to is obviously a big big factor and then you will start to or you can as we discussed many times you can start to sell the defeat to yourself and come up with reasons why that happened. And that starts that rehabilitation process towards you getting back in the ring again. And those reasons become very specific as well, by the yeah. way. I just kept my right hand up. I'm like, oh, stupid mistake. I won't make that the next time. That. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and that will happen, won't it? No, I mean, yeah, that, course, that, yeah. it's an inevitable process that that will happen. It's a bit like a fighter actually retiring and then a year down the line when all the aches and pains are gone and some of the memories have faded of what well, a nightmare making weight is and all the rest of it they walk past the punch bag they hit a punch bag they feel amazing and think oh well you know well uh, I'll, I'll i'll come back it's it's kind of that in, in in microcosm really and it's at that point that the people around you have got to do their best to try and make you understand that that's what's happening. That's what's happening there. You are you are trying to, you're doing your best to see this mirage, basically. Um, but it's easier said than done. And I don't really want to see him box again myself because I think he's been terrific. He had a fantastic amateur career. 
but I can't say for absolutely certain, of course, because you know I don't, you know, I'm not involved in this process. I'm not close to him. I'm not. I'm not certain that we won't that we won't see him again because he hasn't achieved what he wanted to achieve, and because yeah. he's been so close at times. You and know, toasted. he was so close against Lee Wood, so close, and toted as well. I mean, he didn't turn pro like some of us were hoping. Everyone's going. This this is a world champion. Headline at Madison Square Garden. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, like and and just think. This is the kid who's going to make it, and then we don't. And so no, to to to, some people telling you, listen, you're not going to get your dream, mate. This it is what it is. You made good money. You know, you've got a promotional company now, which is which is hopefully is going to be doing a deal with Matchroom, I think, and they or they're working together. So you know, you might you know you've got a career there, and I think he has. He's an intelligent man, and but this is it for you. I think it's an easy conversation with his brother, if because you, you love him. He's your brother, and I don't speak to my brother, but <laughs> no, but it's like, and you go like, you're done. Made you fucking you brilliant. You've been brilliant. Like you've been like you've been one of the island's best. I mean, you were world champion as an amateur, and you were yeah, the good poker career actually, but maybe not for his profile for what for they thought. Not for his own expectations. Yeah. But, but I've seen it in there. The I've case, seen it in there. George Groves, and they're gonna go, and then you go. Well, you no, know, they might. He might have had that. People might have had the conversation with George, but he kept going. He got a world title win. But then you know, he had to wait for his opportunity because he had had fights and then when he won the world title, the, no, no, George is a world champion, champion caliber fighter. But when he won the world title, that was an easy fight for him. I, I, I thought Certainly compared to his other world titles. No, yeah, it was, it was an easy yeah. fight, full stop. It was an easy fight for him. Of course he was. He deserved it because all the other fights were killers. Do you know what I mean? That's why, you know, like he had Badu Jack at, at his peak, by the way, you know, and then he had that other fella from, from up north. And but you look at what happened in those fights and, and you know, he did so well in the first one and okay, he got stopped, George, but he did so well. And, and the Jack right, he, fight he could have won. And the Jack yeah. fight he could have won. He got chinned by Frotch in the second, but, you know, he was very close on the cards at that point and that's just one of those things that can happen. Whereas with Michael, the three defeats... They've got worse each They've time. They've got worse each and time, yeah. That's kind of where I, what I wanted to discuss with this because we, we always talk about a, a, a big example, a big obvious example over the last few years of, of us doing this show is um is Wilder after the second Fury fight in particular. And you just feel like now with Conlon, okay, the first wood fight, you go, oh, I'm so close. If I just managed to get that round, oh, the knockdown before wasn't a knockdown given the wind and the sails. If I'd have just lasted, then I'd have won. That's a real easy way. It, was a, it would have been incredibly yeah. hard to take, but a real easy, but one easy to way to yourself. compartmentalize, yeah. absolutely. Luis Alberto Lopez, yeah, he's a good fight. He can punch a bit, just fought the wrong fight and got caught yeah. with a good shot. And, and he saw some on Oak with Yeah, exactly. And Whereas Jordan Gill, I mean, all due respect to Jordan Gill, it was a fantastic win. I don't think Michael Condom. Most fighters don't think they're ever going to lose to anybody regardless, but I think losing to a Jordan Gill and in the way that he lost to him, I yeah. think that'll be particularly difficult to swallow for yeah, a man Yeah, absolutely. Caliber. And I, th I think, I think you know, when he has that conversation with his dad as well, will have a big bearing mm. on this because obviously he's, you know, he's, he's, he's been in boxing forever. I think when, when those, when, when his dad and, and Jamie have that, have that, that chat with him, it, it could even be a scenario whereby he kind of says, listen, I know what you're going to say. And you don't need to say it. You're right. That's it. But it'll be in a few weeks when the potential problem will yeah. come. I think at the moment he'll agree. And that's where they need to say it. And where, even if, if you were to say that, they go, I go listen. You know, being my brother, man, and my son, I gotta say it. Dude. I gotta. You gotta know. Like not just and like every time you sell it to yourself. Did anybody ever say that to you, Barry? No. Did they not? They were going, are you fighting again? Come on, I'm going holiday next week. <laughs> no, no, I didn't have no. It was, it was my my own choice. I mean, I had problems. I had most po more problems with my scans again. Yeah. It wasn't really a problem. I just couldn't go through the process. But by the time you know, I had all my brain scan stuff and got my license back, I didn't like boxing anymore. So by the time I got, I, there's no excuse for the defeat. I got beat by a better guy. And I trained out. I thought I was going to win. I thought my career was going to be great. But it was, I, 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 there was no love in it anymore for me, and I wasn't good enough to do it without the love. Some people can do it. Some people don't. I know those people say they don't like boxing. No, like, but they can do it. They, they, they're just magly, they're magly gifted. I'm not wasn't as good enough, so I couldn't. Do, I had loved the sport, didn't give a shit about all the money and all that. Mm. When it became all that, and and you know, it, it makes it difficult for you, and it's hard. So you got to be in love with it for some of my my abilities. But Conlon's different. Maybe he has the ability. It's hard for him because he's he knows he's good enough to be a world champion, but he's never going to be it. There's a different mind, different to a lot of uh, other uh, us. Like you know, like if Gil don't get a world, Gil gets a world title shot. See, if Gil boxes um, Joe Claudine and gets beat and retires. He'll think, oh, I got close, but he'd be happy. You would. If I would have got a world title, if I would lost my world title shot, I'd never boxed again, I'd box for a world title. 
You know, like I, I thought I'd be, always thought I'd be a British champion, a European champion. I thought that they were they were realistic aspirations for me. But back then, being a world, no, none of us turned pro thinking we were going to be world champions. Very few. No, they all be multi weight world champions. Yeah, yeah. New shorts every time you box. <laughs> Weird. But like you know, but it's, it's it was different. So you know, like and I think Gil is that sort of ilk. He'll, he'll be happy. But Conlon is. is he got to find another something else because he's going to be unfulfilled for a long time of his life. That's just a fact, and, like, that, and that's 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 yeah, and that's quite bleak, and and that's and unfortunately that is that is the that's road. That's it works, isn't it? That, that, that's how it works. Everyone in yeah, life. Look that, at him. Yeah. <laughs> that, Always but, filled, but, obviously. But that is that, <laughs> that is the road that lies ahead, and that that's why like that, that fight on Saturday for me, it kind of. Without wishing to get too poetic about it, it did for me just embody what the real brutality of boxing is, yeah. and, and it's not the punches in the face. Although clearly that that can be brutal, the physicality of it, the brutality of it is the just shattered dreams. Yeah, emotional is cool. Yeah, it's the shattered dreams, and, and Michael Conlon expected to become a world champion, and he was he was so close against Lee Wood, but it but it didn't happen. And at some point, you have to you have to try and let it go, and you have to try and let it go whilst you can walk away from the sport without too much potential because we can never know um, physical long-term damage you know that that's it, it's a a lot of it's fights. a rough old game mm. and and it, it's, it's gonna be really 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 hard for him to do it but you know I'm not I'm not saying like I'm trying to put it all on Jamie Conlon but you know he just he just watching him at ringside watching the fight on Saturday because I, I spoke to him a few months ago now because I was I was wondering whether I might be able to talk to Michael for for for, for the book I'm doing about the knockout I, I thought there might be a chance he might do it because he kind of talked about it a bit and, and Jamie very diplomatically kind of said to me listen he's an active fighter it's not really yeah. realistic to expect mm, nice, him yeah. to do that and he was right but and that's why I rang him and I didn't just try and doorstep Michael with it but he, he did say to me, like, I'd, I'd, I'd never even really thought about the knockout and what it could do to someone until it happened to my brother. Because he never got knocked out, Jamie. No. Um, and Went it down must from be... a few body shots in his time. Yeah, of course, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, 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 I was there. And, and, <laughs> yeah, it just, you, you could see the look on his face as he was watching on Saturday that he knew, like everybody else in the arena, what was going to happen that the, the end was in that fight the end was 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 nigh there was no after what happened in the second round there was no there was no surviving it um it's tough man it is really 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 this tough. is so confident they were of my everyone were were michael winning they had jamie mic'd up so they're going to speak to him machine rounds That'll Obviously, that, yeah, that, that they, 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 no, be fair, they, they, they cut this straight away. They're not going to use him in, in that, especially after, even after the first race. They're like, hang on, this is tough. And the second round, they're just like, no. But I think they, were, they, they, all, they all looked geared up for Conlon to put on a fantastic display. And it was like, oh, can you get it? Can you get Gil up there early or late? That's true, isn't it? And, um, and, and you talk about like the, not the physical, but the emotional, like the, certainly the state of boxing. You get in the fight, always in a fight, you get the two scale, the dramatic ends of each scale, don't you? And that's that. And Saturday was that career over, new lease of life. Mm. Yeah, it's madness, isn't it? it, 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 it yeah, best biggest it. win of my career, worst night of my life. And then you've got in, <laughs> when you listen to Jordan Gill's post-fight interview, you realise how fine those lines can be and how fine mm. those margins between. Ultimately, not in the let's just spoke from a sporting context in the ring. There wasn't a close fight or anything like that. But you see where Jordan Gill's come from and now where he can go and, and yeah. what the next twelve months could be for him. And it's a bit of a, a stark um, realization as to what the next however many months could be like yeah, for Michael. Conley. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like I, I, I remember talking to Charlie Fitch, who he refereed mm. Frotch Groves, and um, you know, great guy, really interesting to to sit down and ch to chat to him about the knockout and. And he just said the way he looked at it that, uh, you know, probably a boxer getting knocked out. The, seconds, a boxer getting knocked out in the boxing ring is kind of like it's like a it's like a career death, I think was the way he described it. And it really, I mean, it can be, can't it? You know, he was stopped on his feet and he'll be I was gonna say he'll be glad about that. I mean, it's it's not it's something, you know, that he didn't he, he didn't he didn't get counted out. He he did continue. He did get back up, and he wanted to continue. But but when the stoppage came, it's interesting that no one's really talking about whether that was a good or bad stoppage. Because when he jumped in, Howard Foster, I did think to myself, "Oh, that was maybe a bit early." But then there was no complaint from no, Conor, no, at all. no, or from the corner. 
And it was, the, it was that type of um, stoppage as well, where it was just chipped away, chipped away, chipped away. And there'd been enough examples of the legs yeah. stiffening and just yeah. losing that state yeah. of balance there. And, well, and well, actually, well, that's, that, well, really, that's well, really good refereeing, isn't it? Because at some point, it, if the corner didn't stop it or the referee didn't stop it, he would have got knocked out. Mm. I didn't. I haven't seen it back yet. On, but um, and I was like the other side, the, the arena I was, but I didn't see it when they because he's close. I, went, I don't know where they, what they, I didn't see what Con's eyes were like. So uh, I don't know if they went. Do, no, no. I mean, because sometimes you see it from the back and you go, "Ooh, close with Jamie Moore." We go, "What's that?" But then we could see from where we were, we could see Con wasn't doing anything, so he like he accepted. It, or maybe maybe he was out on his feet. Yeah, he was done. He was done. I thought, I thought it was good stoppage. It was, yeah, it was. It looked, it looked it like was. for me, actually, because he was getting hurt anyway. Every time he got hit, he just got hurt. And that's exactly what referees are in there, uh, are, are in there for. You, you You can see why the corner can't. They might not have been far away from doing it themselves, but, you know, it's, it's a big, big fight. It's that equation, you know, where, you know, you want to give them every chance, but, but nowhere referee is. They're not going to take a chance on a fighter's long-term physical health to give them that yeah. chance of winning when... Is a seasoned observer, which Howard Foster clearly is. Yeah, well, you see, George, he knows. George, you see George Rose's career, didn't he? Yeah, he he knows that he but can't. But he boxing as well, so he can't say nothing. He, he knew at that point that Michael Conlon couldn't win that fight. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right, we're going to run through a quick couple. We're going to split this one and do the Haney Progress stuff separately. But anyway, uh, good win this weekend, Barry, for Kevin Agyarko against yeah. Troy Williamson. One by split decision. Uh, competitive fight certainly through the first half of the fight before I think maybe the freshness and the youthful yeah. exuberance of Mr. Agyarko prevailed. He boxed well under pressure because like Williamson's quite what, relatively one-dimensional. Mm. He can be better, actually. I think he can be a better fighter than he is. But he sometimes he wants to just come forward and then sort of just forgets sometimes about doing other stuff he sort of follows you around but he's a, pro he's a constant pr he's a constant presence on you all the time and, and for Agiaku he hadn't really experienced that before and he coped with it really well I thought dug him when he did moved around quite well used his feet better than I thought he could and it was a good win I thought it was a good win I thought it was a, it was a competitive fight with only one winner that's what it felt for me on the night so yeah, good and a, and a step up for him I think it's Troy Williams and still got a career I think I, I it, may, it might just be domestic level. There's nothing wrong with that, but um, but he's a hard man to beat. He is for anybody, I think, at, at that level. So that was a real stepping stone for for Jacko. And um, yeah, and I, and, and I think from that he move on. But there's still bigger tests. He's not in a, he's not in the easiest of weights, unfortunately. But yeah, it was a good. It was a really good win. And and also, if, and we've got to keep mentioning about the crowd as well, because it was that was it was a pretty busy. It wasn't full up, but it was pretty packed. Like from seven o'clock on, to be fair, there was a big crowd there from early on. So you know he, he had boxing with a lot of people there, and and it was um yeah and he coped with it all quite well. The pressure and and the, the being the favourite in the biggest fight of his of his career, and I thought at stages he boxed beautiful. Yeah. Andy, it was a job well done. It was a job well done. It, it was the kind of step up that he needed, and it was interesting to hear him talk afterwards about how. Um, people were talking in the build-up about him not really wanting the fight and he, he kind of pressured into it and he didn't really want it and all the rest of it and you know he, he gave his answer didn't he because he dealt with he dealt with Williamson very well I thought it was just a really I thought it was just a good all-round performance um, and, and uh, the kind of performance we we've we kind of needed to see from him probably um, like I said last week I've I've always He's always somebody who I've looked at and felt like there were possibilities. I've never been sold on him, ironically. No, fair enough. Yeah, he looked good, but I wasn't quite sure. But um, he stepped up Saturday. I just wonder now whether, as well, with with, with if that if that is it for Michael Conlon, um, you know, Belfast always needs a a flag bearer, don't they? Um, you know, we had Frampton, Ryan Burnett, um, Conlon. Um, they need someone to step up now, don't they? To step up into that into that void. I mean, it could be Crocker. Yeah, so it could be Crocker now, or it could the be the way. pair of them. You know, it's it, but it needs there's a there's a vacancy for yeah. for the for the for the the go to guy to headline a show in Belfast. Yeah, I think there's enough talent. Obviously, we had the show in Dublin a couple of weeks ago as well. Um, so there's enough kind of Irish talent. Both yeah, there's people. plenty. Yeah, yeah, Paddy Donovan. You have like yeah. a card in either Dublin or Belfast of so Paddy Donovan, Lewis Crocker, and Kevin Agyarko. Yeah. Prob probably can do some do do quite well there. 
Um, where next for Agyarko? I'm just looking at a couple of the names hovering around in and around his weight. Um, there's Sam Eggington, at £154, still knocking about. There's also Dennis Hogan, which I quite like. Agyarko yeah. versus Dennis Hogan. He's Hogan, got some credentials. Yeah, just box JJ mm. Metcalf as well. His last fight was against JJ Metcalf, a stable mate of Kevin Agyarko now at the Rotunda. Who, who next? Who, who do we want next for, for Kevin Agyarko, Andy? I mean, I feel like Eggington. Eggington's always a good fight, isn't he? Eggington's always a good fight. Um, Hogan wouldn't have been someone who immediately sprang to mind, but I can see the, I can see the merit in that. Irish connection. Yeah, I can see, I can see the merit in that. I think either one of those two would be, you know, would be a reasonable um, option for him. Eggington's a hard fight still, though. Yeah, you yeah see, absolutely. You, you, you constantly say with Eggington. Oh, yeah. That's it. No, he's going to become cannon fodder. If he keeps going, he's going to be cannon fodder because he just can't keep taking the, the punishment that he takes. But he's one of those weird weirdos that just can. He is, though, isn't he? Yeah. Just can keep taking it like and just performing all the time. Just know he's just always there, always. And you worry about the long term damage, and you just think some fighters just don't have it. I mean, it's got to be something, but I mean, just some fighters don't. You know, you always look up, you would just look at the fighters. You see a lot of fighters who are really good boxers who are, who are the ones that have damage more than the, the walls. I know a journeyman who, from my era, looks like he never had a fight in his life now. He's like, he's got to be like 58. He looks like George Hamilton. <laughs> yeah, he's on George Hamilton, this, but he's like, like Brad Pitt. Like, you know, it's just, doing, it's just funny how people work, and he's one of those. He's just like, naturally, like, he must have some sort of like, um, Safeguard around his brain, there's just nothing, you know, doesn't, just nothing has an effect on him. So, yeah, that, that's a hard fight for that guy. Again, you've got a guy who's on him constantly, so it's easy to hit. You think, oh, I can just, I've got a free target here, but he just doesn't stop coming. And he, and he boxes quite well at stages, so it's a good, I never thought about that one, but that'd, that'd be a good fight for him. And a sellable fight, because, mm. you no, know, I can't remember Sam Egerton being in a bad fight, to be honest, I can't. You know, like, we even had a war with Paulie Malinagi. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> anyone yeah, who can yeah. go to war with Paulie Malinagi <laughs> is probably in some entertaining fights along the line. Uh, final one from Belfast this past weekend. We just mentioned Lewis Crocker uh, got the job done against the now retired Tyrone McKenna. We've all um, watched with a lot of joy Tyrone McKenna's career over the years, his career and some of his outside of the ring activities as well. Been very, very entertaining. Um, but was just second best to a, a naturally bigger and a naturally, I think, better fighter in Lewis Crocker this past weekend. Yeah, that, that's what happened. That's what happened. And, and that's what we, uh, what most people sus suspected would happen. That's what was supposed to happen with regard to, um, you know, what would come next. You know, Crocker is the, the kind of coming man, if you like. And, and McKenna is, it's a great way to go out. It's a great way for him to go out on a big show in front of a good crowd. He did his thing as he, as he, as he always does and if he sticks to it and he doesn't get tempted back out of retirement I think it's a good decision I think it's the right time to go because you don't want to see anybody um, become just take too much punishment basically and just become a name for other people's records but he would have gone into that fight on Saturday McKenna believing that he could win and genuinely believing that he could win Um I've always enjoyed watching him. He's good company. And I'm just kind of interested to see what he does next, to be honest, because people might not know he was a very accomplished actor when he was younger. He was in a film called The Mighty Kelt with Gillian Anderson and Robert Carlyle when he was 14, 15. Um, you know, they wanted him. A big agency came for him, wanted him to do elocution lessons, um, and he couldn't be bothered. Um, so he kind of turned his back on that on that route, but he could go back to that. He actually got offered a, offered a part in Game of Thrones right at the start. I don't know which part it was, but but right at the start, and he turned it down because he, he decided to pursue boxing at that point, and he didn't feel he could do both at the same time. So yeah, he's 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 got a good podcast as well. Him yeah. and Tommy McCarthy. Uh, I listened to that; it's good fun. So it's just a good story all around, Tyrone. Uh, I hope he doesn't get tempted back out of retirement because he'll always get offers. He'll always get offers because people know that he brings something to a show. He's good at selling a fight. People like watching him. But if he could stick to that decision, I think it's a good decision. Barry, um, it seems as though we've been looking for, for kind of welterweight prospects on um, on these <coughs> shores, obviously Ireland, whatever, um, for a little while. And it seems like in the last couple of weeks, in Paddy Donovan and Lewis Crocker, we've seen two guys who have, have really 
put their flag in the sand, so to speak, at one four seven. Yeah, they have. I thought, I thought Crocker was good. Again, this is a worry that he might that he that he box at the same pace all the time. We step at the level, someone might be able to work you out because all his shots are heavy, but they might all be the same weight. And so sometimes he just needs to maybe just reduce it a little bit, just to open him up by a little faster, and then bam, because he has power. And you, you could see him like really chopping down with the shots. Can you like Golovkin esque elbow up, really chopping down with them? It was, it was. I enjoyed it because like they, they were both talking to each other all the time, like smiling at each other, laughing, at each other, especially in the early rounds when it wasn't getting, when it wasn't initially too tough for, for McKenna, and um, yeah, <laughs> McKenna, McKenna's just too tough, isn't he? he? He takes a shot and he laughs and, and rallies back with loads of punches, and it was good to see Crocker react. I was, that was, I thought Crocker, it was Crocker was always going to win the fight, but how he reacts to somebody who punches back after you've hit him because most people he hits, even if they're not hurt, they'll they'll look to. You know, Find a little space to move around cleverly, but McKenna doesn't. You know, he's, he's that sort of guy. You got, got to stand his ground all the time. Too brave his own good. But yeah, so and and Crocker dealt with it quite well. It was quite a high pace fight. A lot of heavy shots went in, and and, and he got a, yeah, it was a good impressive win. A win, he's you no, know, he was a massive favourite. He still got to do the job, and he did it quite well. And I think yeah, I think he sold himself a bit Saturday night. If we're buying stock in Lewis Crocker or Paddy Donovan, who are we buying? Paddy Donovan. Yeah. yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah I think his, you know, his, his ability, you know, him and Crocker right now is a is a hard fight and and a winnable fight for Crocker, by the way, because he does hit hard and he's hard, and I think he can take a shot, but um, the skill set of Paddy Donovan, the timing that he has, I think his judgment of distance, you got all that stuff that that smells of a real world class prospect. You don't know, but you know, where he is right now, you, I would more money on him making it than Crocker I think he goes further if they never met and they just go up their own paths of equal ability tests then I think Donovan goes higher yeah it'd be a p potential fight down the that's line that's a great little fight that's a great fight make Big it now not <laughs> <laughs> um, and finally uh, this past weekend we saw the return of Ryan Garcia over across the pond uh, with stoppage win over Oscar Duarte in a fight we didn't have everything his own way Andy um I think kind of in Ryan Garcia, we're still, or certainly I'm still at a stage where I didn't necessarily expect to be after the Luke Campbell fight, where I'm still not really sure how good he is, how good he's going to be, how long he's going to be around for, uh, all of those things. And despite getting a win over Oscar Duarte this past weekend, I think, again, it's it's, it's still, I don't, I don't want to be disrespectful and say the jury's out on him because he's clearly a very talented fighter. We want to see him big, big fights, but... Yeah, not the dominant win, but maybe not the one that he needed. Maybe needed some some difficult rounds, and Oscar Duarte come forward and put some pressure on. Uh, but ultimately, Garcia, the firepower, that big left hook that he does carry, got the job done in the end. Yeah, he, he did. But I, I think it is a fair comment to say that the jury's out on him with regard to that very top level, which is where he wants to be. Because we saw what happened against Javante Davis, and we were talking earlier about selling a defeat and reacting to a defeat. And it was interesting to hear him say, basically, Javante Davis beat me on my absolute worst night. And he's writing it off, isn't he? He's trying to write it off mm. that, you know, everything went wrong in his head, whatever these things are, whether they're real or not, doesn't really matter. If he can convince himself that that's what happened and that should they meet again and it would be different, then that's what, that's what you have to do. And, and that's obviously what he is, what he is doing. But... The reality is that at the moment we don't know whether he belongs at that at that top level um, or not, and I don't think he really I don't think he really likes that. I think he it's not like he's not prepared to do the hard yards, but it's almost like he's in his head he's already at that level. He's already a world champion, but he hasn't actually done it. Um, George talks about this quite a bit. George Groves when when. You know, earlier in his career, when he's having these near misses against people like Froch and against Badu Jack, in his head he was thinking, you know, just world champion without the title. But then you've actually got to go and do it, which which he did. But but a lot of people wouldn't have had the kind of perseverance that that he had. And Garcia's obviously not not at that not at that stage because he's a lot earlier in his in his career. But I feel like mentally that's kind of where he is. He places himself on that level. And for your own self-belief and your own self-confidence and your own ego, which all, and all those things have to be really, really strong, uh, that's that's kind of a good thing. But but it's also kind of 
a bad thing because it's not real. Barry, um, where do you stand on, on Ryan Garcia? Because now we've obviously seen him, he's boxing with Derek James. Uh, he's hopped around from trainers here, there and everywhere. He's hopping around now in weight. He's up at 143, uh, which I think was an 11th hour decision, uh, introducing that catch weight. Uh, talking about moving to 147 for his next fight. All of those kind of little things are all, to me anyway, little mini red flags where potentially we're not getting, or Ryan Garcia is not getting the kind of grounding that one would want for a, for a, for a prospect of his kind of, I guess, ceiling. And as Andy says there, maybe the where he's at in his career and his own kind of interpretation of where he's at in his career are, are, are two different things. Well, he's not a prospect anymore, is he? That's, you no, know, he's, he's boxed, you know, Jamonte Davis, who he's a world level class fighter. That's what he'll deem himself. And he maybe is. I think he's, I think he's not bad. I don't think he's, I think people like jump on him, jump on him a little bit too much. And Duarte wasn't a bad opponent, but I think it was an opponent that well suited for him. But I don't know what he was doing with that shoulder roll thing. It was awful. He's like just leaning, he had no balance. He kept turning away, not even looking at the shot. So you've seen him trying to make him a less of a tag. I don't know what he said. What did he say? He said, I'm like, you know, no, yeah, I had to like, like, calm him down a bit or something I don't know what he said but it's like <laughs> it's just it made no sense because you're well, like you, your shoulder roll you got to you lean back with it and you turn with it but you're sat on the back foot mm. he was turning this way he was leaning right back too high and he was turning away you couldn't see anything so you're getting caught with left hooks all the time it wasn't working I mean it's rather it was a better fighter or, f or like faster hands and faster reactions he's in trouble so you never used to do that before you got to you got to be a hand side fighter you got really fast hands you got fast feet and he got power. Work on that. So with that, you you're better off being more con more conventional with your, with your, with your movements, and and we'll be on your nice long jab. You can step in fast, step out, and then whip that right that right hand over the top. So he won, quite comfortable. The finish was all right, you know. And, and but it, like he, ch I think he's you know, Derek James didn't want him to do that. He was clear in the corner, wasn't he? He didn't want him to box that way. He wants to do his own thing, and that's why he's bonks him on training the trainer. I, I would imagine in the end. They're having clashes in the gym, and he's like, "Oh, hang on a minute! I'm this is my career, which is right." But you know, when you're in the gym, your trainer got to be your god. If you and if you don't believe what he's saying, you move on. Maybe that's what he's doing. Don't believe you know because you know, like some fighters, especially when they're already famous. You know, the, you know remember he's a famous guy, and he not outside the boxing. So maybe it's like, well, you tell me, but don't tell me. Suggest things to me in a, an aggressive manner. <laughs> so we we'll replicate you being my boss, but you're not really my boss because they're not. But you've got to have it in the gym. That's got to be the case to, for it to work properly. So Derek James probably wants to be, you know, this do this, 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 and this. And early in the relationship, you'll do what you're told because you want because you want to be um, you want everyone to like you. You want to train to like you. You want to be like so he's impressed with you and you're, and you're impressed with him and stuff like that. But ultimately, that shoulder will turn. I can't see however that Derek James would ever see that in the gym and it go and, and go. Me. Yeah, do that. Do more of that. He'd be saying, "Don't do that," and he couldn't have been doing it in Sparta because they would have been. I don't think that would they would have gone into the ring and 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 they would have been murdered in the corner, like I think. So yeah, but I mean, if he boxed like that against a higher opposition, he, then he maybe he gets a second defeat. But I think the raw ingredients you have with Ryan Garcia is a good fighter. Do you think that they will always remain raw ingredients though? Rather yeah, it's a potential there is. Up, yeah, I don't know, like some sort of omelet thing, but yeah. Whatever. Yeah. No. Yeah. But no, <laughs> like, no. But I think I think this, this, that is a case. That is a, that is a worry because like, you find that quite often with punchers that they they don't have to work on their frailties because the power's always disguised the things they couldn't do. Heavyweights are for, for yeah. an example that they because they all they do is do a one two left hook most of them, and they're world class because the power with it, and you sometimes you get that. That you don't have to worry about stuff because they lift their chin. Too, he's one of them. This chin too high, because he got super fast hands and he is very very fast. He gets to the target first, so those mistakes are not caught out until you box a Javante Davis, who might be fast, but what he is is exceptional timing. Mm. And you see that with like and and Garcia's got the blind speed of, a, of an Amir Khan. So different styles, I know, but I mean, there's no thought beyond the speed. It's just speed. So when they say timing beats speed, it doesn't. Timing beats blind speed. When it, with speed with thought, when you know what you're going to do, and, you, and then that's, that's a focus speed. That's hard to beat. For that. I don't care how good your timing is, because that's boom, boom. But if you just, if it's just like, Gamia can get caught because he, would, he knew he had speed. He threw like 15 punches or six when he, and then like someone would go boom. Like Manny Pacquiao had educated speed, but he, mm. he would throw really fast hands, but he'd move around the clock mm. on your body. So he's hard to counter. Ryan Garcia's got blind speed, and he gets away with it. 
but not against Javante Davis, who has exceptional timing because he's <coughs> five foot in the fag butt and he's had to learn. He's always boxing taller, bigger guys, so he's had to learn the judgment of the distance and he can jump in. But Duarte, he's not, he's slow feet. No, a good fighter, if you stand in front of him, he is Duarte. He's a, good, he's a hard fight for anybody, you know, physically, but mentally and tactically at the higher level, that's an easy match, I think. And so, yeah, I don't know where he goes. I, with a name like him, he's always going to be in big fights. Is he going to win a world title? I don't think it's like, it's, 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 is it like well, the way, super lightweight. Yeah. I'm still not used to it. Well, don't, we still don't know what's going to be happening with Roly Romero. That that Roly Romero, O'Hara Davis. That's the, mm. that's the weak link, isn't yeah, it? That there, um, let's be honest. Uh, yeah, it would be really interesting to see what happens with him. Trainer wise, does he? We've had he, three in the last yeah, four or five is he, fights. Is now. he going to stick with anybody or not? Because I think that will give us a strong indication as to whether he is maybe a bit deluded. Because a lot of fighters will go through trainers, but what often happens is that you have won for a long time and everything's great, and then you have a defeat, and and then you'll go and move on to somebody else because maybe you've had a conversation and some home truths have been told, and you don't really like what you hear. Um, and so you move on to somebody else and then maybe that works for a bit and then you move on to somebody else. But to to have a number of different trainers this early in your career is, I would say, a bit of a concern because it maybe suggests that he thinks he knows better than them. But he hasn't done enough to be able to justify that as being something that's grounded in reality. And so then your kind of your big self-belief is teetering over into delusion maybe. And, and we all know that fighters need that's a real fine line they, yeah. they all tread because you've got to have this absurd confidence in yourself that you know well any anyone who starts out on any career in any sport thinking I'm going to become the best in the world you know just think about that for a statement it's mental really isn't it but you have to believe it but it has to be there has to be some essence to it and if he's not going to listen to people and if he moves on from Derek James you'd imagine it'll be because He's not, the trainer feels like he's not really listening or whatever Derek James is saying, Garcia doesn't like it. So he just ends up, you just end up moving around until you find someone who who agrees with you basically, don't you? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it is a concern. And particularly when you look back at, I mentioned earlier about the Luke Campbell win. I remember speaking to um, Shane McGuigan after that when he spoke to Garcia the day after the fight and obviously he'd won and I think everybody had kind of w was very impressed with that version of Garcia picking himself off the ground against a legitimate fighter in Luke Campbell and then stopping him in an in impressive fashion and he said then that you know I want the biggest fights possible remember he kind of immediately made a beeline for Manny Pacquiao he wants to fight Manny Pacquiao then he wanted to fight Javante Davis and then he wanted to be out of boxing when he's sort of 26-27 um, obviously it didn't quite work out that way he's a bit of time out and then obviously got the Javante Davis fight he's now talking again like he wants the biggest fights possible and getting those big big fights maybe that's just kind of where he sees himself and he thinks like yeah. look okay we'll do all of this but I want yeah you're here but I want the biggest fights just go to the biggest fights I might win that might not win that and you'll get him as well because yeah, for the, sure, the commercial yeah. value he has isn't he so and he is an entertaining fighter and he's like and he has the type of freakish natural athleticism that he could beat a lot of guys who are a lot more you're training cautiously when you fight him you're not going in there going I'm just going to walk right through him yeah. you are thinking in the end this, he'll give you know he'll make I, a mistake and, yeah. yeah the chin's high so he's, he's a hit but if you can punch so, you know like a progress you know, if I whack it if I if you know, from the south ball stand, if I slide in with that front foot and whack him with the big right no that big right hand he throws at the top progress if I hit him with that he's done that big chin in the air, that big beautiful face in the front, mm. like lifting up. Same as Campbell hit him, would I say. Yeah. yeah. No, but, but Proger, you don't get up, possibly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or if you do, he, he piles it on you. But also, you think, I'll, go, I'll do that to him, but if he leans back and throws that left hook, I'm done. As so I'm sliding in, a little bit, bit too much weight over the front over the front knee, and I'm done. So you know, that's what, you know, the, your reputation, the reputation that precedes him when you have power, it does, doesn't it? Your reputation goes, goes ahead of you, and you go, so you train with a little bit of a cautiousness. But at the highest level, they have to commit themselves. That's the, that's what makes them high-level fighters. So you don't make him a favourite against any of the, the very top ones. But again, that, that WBA title, which is a little bit in disarray, you know, you know the, the Roley and O'Hara and Barros, Barroso. Is yeah. it? He might change the name now, he's so old. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Barroso to you. Mr. <laughs> Granddad Barroso. Well, hey, what, pa Pappy Barroso. What, what is going on with that? He's, he's Romero's now champion in recess, hey, isn't he, or something? He, it doesn't matter what he is, does it? I mean, <laughs> it's going to be O'Hara Davis versus uh, Ismail Barroso at some point, I believe, for the interim belt. But it looks as though... 
people want to make Roly versus Ryan Garcia. That's been a that's been a thing since long before both of them ever got near a world title. There's the very famous spar. If you haven't seen it, there's a very famous spar of them in the Mayweather gym about seven or eight years ago. And since then, that's been you know as as Garcia's star has obviously ascended massively, and Roly Romero's done some things. Well, obviously, yeah. where he boxed uh, Javante Davis. That has been something that people want to make, and I think if you know if they want to make it, and I think you know, governing bodies have a have a funny way of making these things work. I'm sure Mr. <laughs> O'Hara Davis and, and Lee you know, won't want to hear that, but I'm sure they're quite aware of the fact that that there, that there are people out there who are trying to make that fight. But who knows? I mean, that now needs a, another date. Is my Barroso and, and O'Hara Davis? O'Hara Davis, they were supposed to box on that card. You can get a visa. Some of these things. something to do with the visa was I don't know what happened. But, but either way, but either, either way, Gassi is back. I think you know, you get, you get, you get, you get <laughs> a stoppage win. That's good for his confidence. And mm. and then also, if he had, if he is going to stay with Daddy James for a bit longer, then it gives him something to work on. The, the problem with going for change of trainer is like you think you're picking up things, but you're not because you just revert back to because in any pressure situation, you revert back to the default mode, whatever that mm. is for you. For me, it was run away. And uh, no, no, but some people it's like, like head down ass up and fight like a lunatic. That's what you de- when, but and a trip, but a trainer might be getting you to do a certain thing, but it doesn't feel naturally comfortable. But it might be the best thing for you when you learn to box. That, that doing that with your left foot forward doesn't feel like when you're right handed, it doesn't feel comfortable because you, you're thinking, This is my big shot, I want to put that in the front, I want to hit you with this first. Mm. But you put it on the back, you want to push from you want all the weight. We on you on your best shot. It'll be your best shot using your body weight as well. So none of this natural, but you have to do it over time because and it becomes natural to you. So a trainer instilling his beliefs, if you believe in him as well, is a long process. So you have to be with the trainer for a long time. So if you think you're going to nick a few things, you'll nick a few tricks. But if you want to, if you want to nick a few actual genuine things that are going to help you, being with a trainer for a year or two is not enough. You think it is because you can do it, but then as soon as you, as soon as you, the shit hits the fan in a fight, you revert back to what you always, you know, you, what you've done the most, what feels most naturally comfortable for Muscle you. Memory, isn't it? And that's why training with your hands up. I got to say this is not out, out the topic. So you know, training with your hands up is so important. Even if you don't box that way, because when you're tired or you're hurt, you want to do that. And if you don't do that in the gym, if you're not used to doing that naturally, you won't do it. Carl Frotz never did it. He never boxed with his hands. He barely put his hands up. He sort of would, but not in the same way. He wouldn't sit. But he had a natural, he had a fantastic chin. But you think if you don't, you train with your hands down, then when you're in, when you're in trouble, you're going to go back to doing this again and get knocked out cold. Unless you've got a freaky chin like Frotz. Yeah, there's not too many of those. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, mean, so, I, 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 I hope <laughs> Garcia, you know, he's good, he's good for boxing. Yeah, you know, for he's, sure. He's absolutely. really good for boxing. I really hope that he, that he, that he does turn out to be what he thinks he is. Um, but you don't get to decide. You don't get to just decide. Yeah. This is what I am, and this is where I am. You actually have to. You have to go through the stages, and you have to prove it. And I understand why you would write off a defeat. And we just talked about it. We talk about it a lot. Um, and in your own brain, decide. Well, next time, if I fought Javante Davis again, then it would be different. But people have to have a reason to believe you. Um, and at the minute, he's only had one fight since then. But at the minute, we don't have that. And he has to go out and, and achieve that. Where next for him then? I mean, let, let's say that he's staying at 140. I know he said that he and Devin Haney um, said that after, well, Devin Haney said after he beats Regis Progo, of course, coming this weekend, he's going to move to 147. Um, we've got Devin, uh, Ryan Garcia boxing at 143. But let's say for argument's sake, he stays at 140. Who next? Who do we want and who do we think we'll get? Well, it, I mean, it's, it is likely to be that Romero fight, isn't it? Yeah, by I hook think. or by crook, you would think. Yeah, which is not a which is a good fight. Yeah, yeah. Actually, no, I'm keen. Fight, I'm, I'm definitely keen. Good, good build up. I can imagine that being yeah. as well between those guys. And it's a winnable fight. It's a, like a winnable fight for both, but I think it's a bigger winnable fight for, for Garcia as well, to be honest. But I, I think that's a, that's a good fight for him. That was a good fight for him on the Saturday. Decent opponent, yeah. but, 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 but below the levels, but not far, not that far below. But it was a good little fight for him. But there's, a lot, there's lots of advice with that weight. Jack Cattrall. Yeah. No, 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 can't, I can't imagine him <laughs> being no, no. excited to no, box no, Jack Cattrall. No, no, no. <laughs> you know, there's, a, there's loads of people around that now that, that wait for him to fight. And he's such a big name that you would yeah. think, you know. It's, well, it's imagine not the, imagine him and Tia Fuma Lopez, the build up for that fight. Yeah. Yeah, Tia Fuma Lopez mad. kind of openly said that he, he, you know, he declined the offer recently to box Ryan Garcia. And the um, offer didn't offer him enough, though. I mean, yeah. he, he he thinks he's worth more than he yeah. is. But, you know, but I, I, to be honest, if you're Ryan Garcia, 
and they're offering you a million dollars. That's what it was. They said, it? yeah, but I mean, who knows? They said, they reckon it was 1.5 million, but plus pay-per-view back end, which when you're boxing a guy who's just done a million pay-per-views yeah, could be, could be a few quid, yeah. like, you know? Yeah. Uh, but we don't know. We're, we're sort of kind of in the realms of delusion and talking about Ryan Garcia versus Tiafimo Lopez. I don't know who's more deluded us. Or <laughs> <laughs> um, we're no, he's such a commercial that. value. In this, spot, yeah. in this spot of all sports, he's such a commercial value that all that common sense thing you were just talking about, which I thought was it's so... It was so much common sense that it wasn't common sense in the end. You cancelled yourself. <laughs> I know out. what you mean. No, in this sport, you went. You but for that market, you value, the wrong stop living so relentlessly in the real but, world. But yeah. for that market value yeah. to stay high, he's got to beat people <laughs> and it, beat people who he says he can beat. But but I think no, because cause of his again, because of his name and his and his commercial value, he almost don't have to. That was what I was just about you to should, say. That. You should do. You know, I, I'm on the page of you. I am, but I mean, I, I, you can see him just walking into any big fight because they know he'll get he'll get oh, the yeah, fight, yeah. but he's got to win them. Yeah, That's yeah, 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 of course, yeah, 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 well, yeah. I was just about to say that it's a bit of a double-edged sword, isn't it? I mean, it's it's one of those good problems um, that he has all of this massive profile and he's always had this bigger claim behind him, which has you know put him in the slipstream for a Javante Davis fight. That I think it's fair to say that he was ready for that fight, but it was a big event, well paid for it. But you know, if he doesn't have the 10 million But we million kind of Instagram thought he followers. was ready at the time. At the time, people were talking about that in, in the build-up. People were I mean, talking I think, about him having a real good chance in that fight. I think Davis so, was a favourite, but a yeah, good chance. Yeah, yeah. But again, do, do we get caught up in the hype of that? Is that part yeah, of the issue? Possibly, Is that yeah. part of the issue of him having this massive following yeah, and being this big star? Do, and, do, and does that kind of, does that, present in its own way an obstacle from him developing and becoming the fight that, that he needs that, to be to that, win those yeah, fights but that's Possibly. one of the just the best things about boxing though isn't it yes, so much to in, it in <laughs> boxing like in other sports you have you have metrics by which you can measure things yeah. you know if you Jumble if field, you're right? yeah if you're if you're if you're a sprinter for example you can't just arrange a race against a load of people you know you can beat and then just say no one is allowed to time it and then you win by miles and go on about how amazing you are and just deny anyone the opportunity to be able to actually judge it. You can't do that. You know, you, you, you run the times and the times are the times. And that's, and that, 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 it's a real tangible thing. In boxing, that's not a real tangible <laughs> thing, is it? You, you, you give yourself an opponent and then you make up your own mind to an extent as to how good you are off the back of it. Yeah, even the way that we, we score and judge fights is human interpretation. Yeah, that, yeah, no, yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. Even, even our facts. Are well, there well, any facts? Even, even, <laughs> are there any facts? Let's, let's go yeah, back to, let's go back to that low blow thing in Poland. I'm not going to go into bad, but the thing, a bit, when, you, when you read about the rules and they say, it's an imaginary line from the... <laughs> it's an imaginary yeah, line. Like, you yeah. lost me at imaginary. It's an imaginary yeah. line. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. There's no interpretation there then, is there? Exactly. Uh, okay, well, I think we're about there. Well, we've got Ryan Garcia versus Oscar De La Hoya. Anybody? Anybody? No. Uh, quite, quite Oscar was that. smashing the pieces. <laughs> I watched that De La Hoya documentary last week, actually. Oh, yeah, it was good. Yeah, it's good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's good. He, well, we, we, we have to wrap this up. We don't have an hour to talk about Oscar De La Hoya and his many, many interesting stories. Um, but yeah, great fighter and a very interesting situation they've got going on over there at Golden Boy. We'll watch that one with bated breath, as I'm sure a fair few other promoters will be as well. Um, but that's all we have time for today on the review section of the boxing show. Don't forget to keep your eyes peeled for our Haney Pro Grey and Billum Smith Masternak previews on Boxing News. But from me, Rob Tebbett, from Mr. Andy Clark and Mr. Barry Jones, thanks for joining us and we'll catch up with you next time. <laughs>